In this video, we will guide you through the fuel priming and startup sequence for a Lanair XT model waste oil heater. If you have just installed or performed seasonal service on your unit and are putting it into operation, this video should help. It's important to follow safety guidelines when working on mechanical, plumbing, and electrical equipment. Only allow qualified technicians to work on your system and ensure that the appropriate personal protective equipment and safe practices are used throughout the work. Before beginning, refer to the product instruction manual and ensure that the unit is properly installed and is ready for operation. At this time, the main electrical service to the unit should be off and the thermostat should be set to its lowest temperature setting. The tank must contain enough approved fuel that the pickup strainer and check valve are fully submerged below the fuel level. Always use an emergency backup heater and maintain fuel temperatures of at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the cap from the standpipe of the fuel pickup assembly. Using a funnel, slowly add fuel to the pickup assembly until the fuel level remains above the primary strainer, indicating that the assembly is full of fuel. The foot valve of the pickup assembly will prevent fuel from flowing back into the tank during this process. Use fresh thread sealant and restore the cap to its position on the fuel pickup assembly standpipe. Ensure that all pipe connections throughout the pickup assembly are sealed, secure, and installed correctly per the product instruction manual. This will prevent vacuum leaks, loss of prime, and other issues that may interfere with the proper operation of the unit. If the system includes an oil pressure bypass regulator, set the regulator to its minimum setting by turning the thumb screw counterclockwise until it is fully extended, then turn the thumb screw in the clockwise direction for two full rotations to seat the regulator diaphragm. Loosen the bleeder port screw of the fuel pump and place a catch pan below it or route a piece of 3 16th inch tubing from the port to the fill port bung of the tank. The main electrical service to the unit should be switched on at this stage. At the heater, toggle the switch on the junction box into the prime position. The orange light near the switch should become illuminated and the pump will begin to operate. When fuel begins to flow from the bleeder port of the pump, close and tighten the bleeder port and quickly move to position the catch pan at the burner end of the fuel supply line. The amount of time it takes to fill the fuel supply line will vary depending on the installation and the distance between the pump and the burner. Ensure that the fuel supply line has been installed per the product instruction manual with a consistent rise to the burner and no high points where air may become trapped. As the fuel supply line fills with fuel, air will be purged from the pipe. As a result, fuel flow may be inconsistent at first, but should quickly stabilize into a steady stream of fuel. If a steady stream of fuel cannot be established at the burner's fuel supply line and instead remains inconsistent or continues to release air after its initial purge, there is likely a leak in the fuel pickup assembly and further troubleshooting should be conducted. Refer to the product manual or contact Lanair Technical Support for further assistance. When a steady stream of fuel is established at the burner end of the fuel supply line, discontinue priming by toggling the junction box switch from prime to run. Reconnect the fuel supply line to the burner and wipe away any fuel that has dripped or spilled during this process. The unit's fuel system is now primed and ready for operation. If using used oil as a fuel source, toggle the preheater switch on the underside of the burner to the on position. The switch should light up when on. If using number two heating oil as a fuel source, the preheater switch should be left in the off position. Check that the chimney flue is drafting in the proper direction and that no other building exhaust systems are drawing air down through the chimney flue. Ensure that the secondary air pressure regulator is supplying approximately 15 to 20 PSI of compressed air to the burner and the primary air pressure regulator is supplying 30 PSI to the secondary air pressure regulator. Set the fan limit control switch to automatic. Establish a call for heat to the unit by setting the thermostat to its maximum temperature setting if the red light on the burner's primary control is indicating that the unit is locked out, you will need to press the reset button on the top of the primary control to reset the burner. The unit should now attempt to start operating. Refer to the manual and set the unit's air shutter to the proper position. Readjust the compressed air pressure now that the unit is running. Set the fuel oil pressure based on the product manual's recommendation for your model. To do this, loosen the locking nut on the oil pressure bypass regulator and turn the thumb screw to adjust the fuel pressure based on the gauge at the burner. Retighten the locking nut after making adjustments. Adjust the weight of the damper door until 0.05 inches of water column is achieved as read by a properly calibrated manometer. Let the heater run and heat up to operating temperature. Your unit is now through the initial startup sequence and is ready to proceed to flame adjustment. Flame adjustment is an important step in the operation and maintenance of your unit and should be conducted at least once daily during use and whenever operating or fuel conditions change. For a flame adjustment guide, refer to the product manual or go to lanair.com for more resources. 
We hope this video has been helpful in operating your Lanair waste oil heater and letting you start enjoying America's best value in heating.